Do you know that this is going to be a slightly longer? Yes. Uh, you know they've explained everything to you. It's, 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 it's not everything, but... Well, I, don't explain, I never explain anything to anybody. It's okay. So it's longer. They said longer. Secret. It's a yeah. bit longer. It's about yeah. 15, 16 minutes. The clock's already running, but we haven't already started. And we'll be yeah, trying to cover as much ground as kind okay, of possible. Sure. Because it's sort sure. of going in tandem with what you're doing this evening. Okay, okay right, yes. Yeah, they did say that. Yeah. What do you do to relax? I don't know yet. Do you get stressed <laughs> out on sets? This is not a question. I'm just What's trying. that? Do you get stressed out on the set? That, that's so bad. No. Actually, I find that a bit... I mean, I, I have yeah. high energy, I feel, but I, I don't usually feel... I wouldn't call it stress. Because yeah. actually it's less... When you got a tension stressful. here, what do you do to get rid of it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I did the other day. I called a doctor. Oh, right. Yeah. That's a... Okay. Did you bring HBC with you this okay, trip? No, oh, we just had a baby, so she's, oh, she's at home having true. to deal well, with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's very good. Yeah. Got to get back in before it grows up. <laughs> and action, indeed. Tim Burton, good afternoon. First of all, many congratulations for the Golden Globe Awards and the three Oscar nominations. The yeah, film is good. Yeah, it's nice for Johnny and. and uh, Dante and Francesca and Colleen. It's, great. It, it's it's it's. I've always wanted to to work with Dante, so this was, I think, a good movie for that opportunity. Were you really angry that you weren't nominated? No, I. Uh, I'm surprised. You know, I mean, I don't think horror musicals are you know in with the Academy, so to speak. So is that something you expect, really? We're well, making inroads. It's a start. I'm happy for Johnny, you know, it's great. He, you know, he tried something that he's never done before, and I felt like, you know, that he was recognized for that, I feel, you know, is, is great, because he's not a singer, and to try a difficult musical like this, I thought was very, you know, strong of him. But, I mean, you knew or found out early on that he had the voice, because he's surprised everybody. Yeah, but I didn't know. I, you know, I asked him to do it, and I, he, he said to me, yeah, I think I can do it, and uh, I didn't hear anything for a while. Um, but I was, it, knowing him, I, I knew he wouldn't have said yes unless he felt he could do it. So uh, when I de finally did hear it, I was amazed, because he took, you know, the music, which is quite sort of operatic, uh, whatever, and he just made it sound like him. It gave it a character. I, he sounded, he made it seem a bit more modern. I don't know, he sounded like David Bowie or somebody else. I don't know who he sounded like, but it was, to me, uh, he, it, it, you know, it exceeded my expectations. This, I think, is actually your sixth film with him. Mm. Why has why the collaboration endured? I think just for that very reason, he's a character actor, and you know, six different times, I feel like I work with six different people. He's just somebody who, uh, and six times he tries something like singing. You know, it's just very exciting to see somebody go out there and and be interested in that. You know, not interested in Hollywood or the the the, the business of it, but just the art of it, and that's always exciting. Have you seen a change in him between one film and another film? No. I mean, only in the sense that he continues to... I mean, the fascinating thing about him is, you know, when I first met him on Edward Scissorhands, you know, he was a teen idol, you know, could have done any big movie, whatever, and he chose to do Edward Scissorhands. And, and, uh, and he's always made those choices. It wasn't until he did Pirates, really, where he went into a whole other stratosphere, but he's always remained the same. He's never really changed. You know, he's always shied away from the publicity side of it and, and the, the, the glamour side of it and focused on just the work, and that's never changed. And I find that amazing in a very volatile business. Do you expect to work with him again? Oh, yeah, you know. I, I, I don't like, you know, I never get to the point where you want to work with somebody just to say, oh, let's work. You, you know, it, you always like to make it about the, the, the project and the work, and that's what's great about him. It's like, I think we both have that f feeling of, you know, it, when the right character, right project comes up, that's, that's, that's when you do it. Okay, let's get back to you. Why did you want to become a director in the first place? You know, because I couldn't imagine getting a real job or, you know, having a real kind of, uh, 
I was one of those types of people, which there are a lot of, I think. Uh, I was very lucky to be able to do this. I, I, I had the, the luxury of, you know, being involved in animation, which I realized I wasn't very good at, but that sort of got me into going to school for that makes you, you know, you learn kind of total filmmaking because you design it, you draw it, you storyboard it, you shoot it, light it, you know, act it. So in some way, animation was the full filmmaking package. And so I was lucky that it kind of got in through that way. What was your big break? Well, I guess it, you could look at it a few different ways. I mean, it could probably go back to my first little short film, Vincent, where, you know, they let me do as an experiment just on company time, a short film. And, you know, that led to another short film. And then that led to Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So, you know, I've had people, I've had supporters, people, certain film executives be see recognize something in me and let me try something. So I... You know, I've had, uh, you, you know, probably a series of little big breaks. How important was Beetlejuice to you then? Um, well, it was very important. I mean, you know, I've, I've always felt lucky because uh, after doing Pee Wee's Big Venture, Beetlejuice was another project that just didn't fit into the Hollywood mold. I mean, I'd read a lot of scripts that were, you know, kind of the traditional comedy, this or that, whatever. Uh, when I read Beetlejuice, it just made absolutely no sense, and it was like I was amazed that a studio wanted to do it. So, I, I again, I felt this strange freedom, and then I worked with a bunch of actors that were very good at improv, and so that, it, it sort of brought me out of my sort of internalized shell of being an animator, and into the into the world of dealing with spontaneity and actors and a bit more, and. and uh, you know, and then when it was fairly successful, uh, it was, uh, it was, you know, it was a big deal. You know, I, I mean, it was. They had talked about me doing Batman, but it wasn't until Beetlejuice was a success that they finally said, yeah, "Okay, okay, you could do that." Were you completely freaked out when they offered you Batman, or did you see it as yeah? No, I mean, I they kind they half offered it to me at the end of Beetlejuice, but they didn't finally say yes until. If the movie had, you know, gone down the tubes, I, they probably wouldn't have really offered it to me. So I think there was a bit of luck that Beetlejuice did well enough for them to... They had confidence in me, but they didn't have full confidence in me. That helped. Obviously, Batman was a massive hit, and then a few years later, you did Batman Returns. In the middle, you'd made Edward Scissorhands. Now, stylistically, Batman tends to look more like the Anton First set design dominated by that, whereas Batman Returns is most definitely a Tim Burton film. How, how was that evolution and how important was Scissorhands in that? Well, Scissorhands was important because it was a more personal project and, and you know, it's personal, you know, I, you make everything personal. I mean, you know, I treated every film I did as personal. Batman I've treated as personal. Um, but. It was nice to kind of do something extremely personal and smaller. I mean, you know, after the big, the weight of something like Batman at that age for me, you know, it was the first big movie I ever did. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a rare at that time for them to offer something that big to somebody like me. So I felt I, I was happy to kind of go away and do something that was, you know, much less focus and just personal and less pressure. And then, you know, with Batman Returns, it was a, um, you know, I, I wasn't really, at first, that didn't really want to do a, a sequel, but, um, you know, I like the world of that world, and I like the, I like the animal character, you know, I like the idea of the penguin, I like the idea of Catwoman, I like the, the sort of animal element, of the, the primal element of the, bat and the cat and the penguin and and so uh and it was a different experience because the first one was shot in london second one was in los angeles so it felt it was a completely different experience in some ways did edward scissorhands give you more i don't know clout with your own personal style no uh, not really i think uh because all those movies i mean scissorhands you know it, they were 
they weren't really perceived as, you know, they were perceived as strange and not necessarily overly commercial, even though, you know, it did fine for what it was. It did well financially, but it wasn't what you'd call, you know, they, they still wondered about me as a person and as a, as a filmmaker. They, they still were questioning what I was all about, even, but they always do. I, I find that no matter how many films you do, they still question to some degree your sanity or who you are or, or, or whatever. Why do you say Ed Wood is one of your favorite films that you've made? Just because th thematically the, the, um, the, uh, the question of failure or success, uh, the failure of uh, the idea of filmmaking as a weird family, um, the, the, the enthusiasm of Ed Wood, the sort of delusional quality of filmmaking and how you get so excited about something, you know, when he was making Plan 9, he, you know, he thought he was making Star Wars, you know? I mean, so it's that kind of thing where you just, I, I just understood it, I, you know? And I loved his passion. I loved the tragedy of him. I loved the weird family he created, his relationship with Bela Lugosi, you know, was, it reminded me of how I felt in the beginning of my career, meeting Vincent Price and, and that, how that affected me. So it was a lot of elements in there that, that I could just, you know, him versus the system, all that kind of stuff into one thing was just made it very personal for me. How did meeting Vincent Price affect you then? Well, it made it, it got me, it was one of those mini breaks. I, you know, I'd written a little short story called Vincent about you know, m me growing up watching Vincent Price movies and how it affected my life. And so I sent him this thing, I, I didn't know him, and he just contacted me back and said, sure, he'd love to narrate it. He thought it was an amazing story. And and so that actually got the film to be made, you know? I mean, his, his blessing and okay and him doing it. Uh, and then, you know, I met him and I just, somebody who had effect, affected me my life in movies. He was a gr great guy, very interesting guy, interested in lots of different things. So it was a very positive experience and, and kind of uh, shaped other kind of relationships and, and feelings about people I've had my, in, throughout my career. I'm racing against the clock here. But me too. It's all right. Well, I'm, we're doing it. I'm, I'm talking quicker than I usually do. Um, okay, so in 36 years, what have you learned? <laughs> what? What was that? <laughs> in 36 years, <laughs> what have you learned? Uh, I don't know. That's the thing. I, I never really analyze uh, me as a... I, I try not to look at myself as a, as, a, as a commodity and just move from project to project. That's it? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think about myself. I don't, you know, I... I try not, I've had enough therapy and I've stopped that because I, I, don't, I, I don't find it helpful. I find being able to explore things through projects are the way to go for me. Um, John, Steven Spielberg's got John Williams, you've got Danny Elfman. How's that collaboration? Well, it's great, although in Sweeney Todd he didn't. I mean, the fact is if Danny had written a musical, it would probably have been one like this. So he, he completely understood what that was all about. But no, I mean, we kind of started at the same time. Uh, so he's a real friend and collaborator. And so you know, I've enjoyed, always enjoyed working with him because again, it's like another character in the film and he helps kind of set the sort of scene and the, 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 the imagery and has always gone on very well with, the, with the, the story and the imagery. You've never been tempted to hire another composer? Mm -hmm. Well, I have worked, you know, I worked with, uh, on Ed Wood, I worked with somebody, I worked with Howard Shore on a, on a movie, um, and then, you know, this one worked just because the Sondheim music was all there. So, I mean, um, I enjoy working with him, so I, I, I think I would always ask him, but, you know, sometimes other things dictate, you know, he's working on another film or... He's not speaking to me, or who, you know, whatever happens, you know. So, you know, anything can happen. But I, you know, he certainly is my friend, and I enjoy working with him. He's still a guy who played Noingi Bongo. Yeah, no, I mean, I used to go see him in clubs before I, you know, I even had a clue that I'd be making movies. So that was a, that's always been a strange feeling for me, to be just a guy going to a club and seeing a band, and you know, then late years later, 
he's scoring movies. Do you get tired of people asking you if there's any rational explanation for your interest in what is considered the macabre, the dark side? Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, no, but, you know, you, you, it's like... Um, I don't really have an answer for it except the fact that um, it's the kind of movie I loved and so it shapes you and it's what inspirations are. Um, but as I said, I've never always seen them as just that one thing. I mean, this one included, I, it was equal, I found it equally funny, this, mo this material, and I found it equally emotional and sort of romantic. And so I, I always find that it's not just something dark or macabre, it's something that has that but other elements in it that hopefully make it more of a mixed bag of events. I'll make this the very last question. What is it you love about filmmaking and animation? The process. I mean, I, I hate the meetings beforehand. I hate all the stuff after making it. And that goes back to Edward. It's like there's something about the weird little family of the people on the set that is just very emotional and very, I don't know, it's, it's just very passionate. There's something about, and, and, and you don't have any of the outside world, the business world, any, you're just there making the movie and it's just very kind of a pure experience and uh, nobody can quite get at you. There, it, you're, in, you're in your own world at that point and there's something really beautiful and, and pure and powerful about that. And animation too, especially stop motion, there's something about people moving objects and seeing puppets on a set that's just very there and visual and you can see it and, and, and I don't know, it, it's, it's that private world or semi-private world uh, with a group of weird family that's just very unique and special. You're not giving it up anytime soon. <laughs> uh, well, until they make me stop, you know, <laughs> which could happen at any time. <laughs> Tim Burton. Thanks. Great to see you again. Yeah. Thanks again. Yes. Yeah. Really good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.